What's up? What's up? What's up, y'all? This is Joseph P. Laney, the underdog coach in the building. I'm about to tell y'all about a crazy story. You won't believe this shit. This is about my time at Red Onion State Prison. I'm sure y'all heard of Red Onion. If you ain't hear Red Onion yet by now, go look up Google. Red Onion State Prison, which is a Supermax prison, which is in Pound, Virginia. Supermax. That means you're locked down 23 hours in one in a cell all day, every day, even on a Sunday. And I'm talking about for years. There's some people that have been in here for decades. I'm talking about years and years and years of incarceration. And it's crazy there because you hear about it in the county jail. Like the first time I heard about Red Ain, I was like, Red Ain. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, man, like, the sound of it was scary. Even the correctional officers, well, you know, they're not correctional officers yet, but, like, the COs that works inside the jails, like the sheriffs, the deputies, and stuff like that, they used to threaten us with rallying because everybody knew this was, like, a treacherous prison, uh, a place you don't want to be where people get stabbed, murdered, killed by the COs in there. The COs was killing people like crazy. This shit was a wild place. And that's I say this was around... 2001 right so my first experience with red Ian, i was at a prison called lawrenceville and i wound up catching an assault case down there i wound up hurting the guy real bad stomping on his head beat him up real bad is this is what, how i was when i was younger my mentality so i went from this level three prison this nice prison y'all talk about they had popcorn they had movies they had video games so all the way being to red Ian, 18 hours away let me tell you, they put me on this bus. Before I even got to the bus, this shit was crazy. They called me, Mr. Langdon, pack up. I'm like, pack up, oh shit, this, here's the moment. Here's the time I'm about to go to this crazy ass place, Red Onion, in the middle of nowhere, the bone docks with all these rednecks, what they consider rednecks, and y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, people, I don't know nothing about black people. The people that see black people and lock their doors, them type of rednecks. This is who is, is running right on your state prison. Y'all like rednecks, the real ones, like chewing tobacco, spitting in your food, them type of people, right? So I'm like, all right, well, you know, I gotta go what I gotta go. I still got 20 years to do. I already been locked up three years at this time. I had a 22 year sentence. So I'm like, man, I ain't, I ain't afraid of nothing. You see me red, you see me red. But deep down, I was a little afraid. I ain't gonna lie. We talk about the infamous Red Onion State Prison, where you go there and you might not make it out. You might not make it out alive. And uh, the statistics will show you that, right? How many people in the correctional officers killed in there and how many people other prisoners killed in there. Like, this shit is real in there, right? So um, they called me, pack up my bags and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, man. So I'm packing my shit up. I'm like, damn. I'm about to go to Red Onion. They like, yo, where you going, yo? Hey, yo, Joe. You know, some people call me, yo, yo, where you going? Yo, I'm going to Red Onion State Prison. Like, ah, oh. even the hardest dudes, even the gangsters, the thugs, the killers was like, oh, man, you going to Red Onion? And I was like, yeah, man. But you know, I had to keep up my facade. You know, I ain't, I ain't worrying about it. I ain't scared. Truly, I really wasn't that scared. I was just afraid of the unknown, you know, hearing about this place years um but using it as a threat to scare you to scare you straight you know to make you feel like oh man you're going somewhere and you're not going to survive this is what they make you believe about red onion this is it's it's a real story about this place this place is crazy and um so i remember the day i can remember the day like yesterday vividly they put these shackles on me right they tied me up they put these cuffs on my wrist and they put these shackles on me like this and they had me like this and they had a box around my waist so I couldn't move my hands and stuff like that. Then they put like shackles on my feet and like this. So I'm, I'm like this, like a real slave, like we on the Amatron, you know what I'm saying? Like we were the Amistad, you know? You all remember that? That's how I felt. And they had me and like 20 other dudes up there. They was going around to different prisons, collecting, collecting other inmates, other prisoners to take them to this long ass journey of Red Onion State Prison where you might not make it back, right? A lot. <laughs> you might make it back, but in a body bag. And I know a lot of people that have been through that part of the process, what I'm telling you, right? So um, as time was going by, 
I'm like, damn, when, when is they going to come get me? I'm getting anxious now. I'm getting anxiety. You know, I'm stuck in the cell, locked down with belt, with chains. And, you know, I'm just waiting to go now. Like, let's, let's get over with, you know? So it was like 3, 4 in the morning. I'm like, oh, man. So they call us out. They give us this little bag, like a bag lunch. It's like brown. You know, for the dudes and the, and, and the ladies who's been in this horrific, traumatizing circumstances that I'm telling you about right now, y'all can contest this little brown bag they give you with the little cheese sandwich, a little bologna sandwich in it, right, with a little apple juice and little two cookies and an apple. Apple got a little dent in it, like a brown dent. you are like, damn, I don't want this. They give you the worst of the worst. So this is what they gave me. I couldn't even eat it because I was so anxious to go to Red Onion. You know what I'm saying? I, I just wanted to get it over with. So they put me on the bus. I walked to the bus. They put me on the bus with, like, First, it was like probably like three or four guys. And then as we was going from town to town, we was getting other individuals to take them to this long journey of Red Onion guys from other prisons. And, uh, you know, I guess the hard heads, the assaultive, the gang bangers, the thugs, the killers, whatever you want to consider it. The worst of the worst is going to Red Onion. And I was in that category at this particular time of my life, considered one of the worst of the worst. So I remember taking this ride. I'm talking about, listen, man, it took us like 10 to 12 hours to get from Lawrenceville Prison, which is near the 757 area for anybody to know about that, the Hampton Roads area, Newport News, North of Portsmouth, around that area, it's close around there, you know. And, um, but they sending us somewhere near Bristol, Tennessee. <laughs> it's like, like the borderline of Bristol, Tennessee. So it was already like, damn, who won't come see me here? You know, it was already in my mind that this is going to be back against the wall, sharp my, you know, my toothbrush, sharp my piece of metal, and however I got to live, I got to live because I got to survive. And this was my mentality at the time, you know? So we're driving and driving and driving. I'm like, God damn, I'm looking, I'm seeing cows, I'm seeing horses, I'm seeing all types of shit. I'm like, damn, what the hell they got us at? They got us in the boondocks. Now, you could tell when you go on somewhere where it's white at. Now, I'm not being, like, you know, stereotypical or nothing like that. But when you start seeing them cows, you start seeing them, you know, them moo, moo, the cows and the horses and the hay and these long fields, you know you either down south or you going somewhere that you don't need not be now. You hear what I'm talking about? And for my case, I was going somewhere I need not be. And that place is Red Onion State Prison. I swear for God, it was the craziest place I've been to. So we wind up getting to Red Onion, this big ass institution. This shit was huge. I'm talking about huge. This is 2001. I'm like, yo, what? So when we pull up, I see like 30 to 40 Big ass white boys. There anybody that been around I know what I'm talking about. I seen 30 to 40 big ass white boys, six foot eight, six foot ten, six foot eleven, 350 pounds with helmets on, shields, uh uh, tra uh tranquilizer guns, stunt guns, they had shotguns, they had all types of shit, knee pads, L pads. These dudes look like they was about to go play soccer or football, like in the landmine or some shit. It was crazy. I'm looking like, yo, I hit the dude next to him. I'm like, yo, you see this shit? He like, yo, yeah, man. He's scared to death. I, I, I'm so flabbergasted about what I'm seeing. These 30 to 40 big ass white boys, like I said, 6'8, 6'9, 6'10, 350, 400 pounders, big ass white boys chewing tobacco. And they said to us, and I'm going to say it in the way that they said this shit to me, this shit blew my mind. He said, now listen here, boys. You have Red Iron State Prison, and anything you do here will result in gunfire. I'm like, what the fuck? Gunfire? <laughs> I thought we left the streets alone. What the hell are you talking about? Gunfire? He said, now we're talking about gunfire. You see the white guys up there, in the, uh, what, they got guns in the towel. You see these big ass towels. I'm like, oh my God, like where the hell they got me at, right? And then he said, and I'm going to tell you something now, if you get out of line, boss, that's going to result in gunfire. He said, I said, that too? Like, what? Like, he said, if you cross this line, the results of gunfire, this yellow line right here, I'm looking at this little yellow line across the thing right now, you know, you can't cross that line. No, they got gunfire. They're going to shoot you. If you get in a the fight, they say gunfire. So I'm like, man, who the hell? I've never been in no shit like this. I've only been in prison three years now. I'm on a 22-year sentence, so, like, I have a long way to go. I'm still young, 21, uh, basically lost in the source. My mind is gone. I'm already conditioned and confined and used to being locked up. So it was really nothing for me. But 
when I seen that, that shit made me realize, like, damn, this shit is real. What did I get myself into? Um, and that's just the reality of it, man. When you see something that you've never seen and you feel like all odds is against you and some shit, like, they could just break your neck, kill you. They took my gunfight. These niggas got helmets on. They got elbow pads on. They got, they got you know, shields and sticks. And you're like, what the? I couldn't believe I was going here, right? But I was here. Here I am at Red Onion State Prison. So they take me through this. They take me through this this area where they tell me to lift my feet up. They tell me to squat and cough and open up my butt cheeks. I'm like, what? Do what? You want me to do? Shut up, boy. I said squat and cough and open your butt cheeks. And if you don't do it, guess what's going to happen? So let me show you what they did. They made an example. They took the biggest dude that was on the van with us on the bus and they stripped him naked, beat him because he didn't want to open up his butt cheeks for him. He just didn't want to do it. I guess he felt uncomfortable. And he beat him and he beat him and they dragged him across the floor for us to see this shit. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, how many times you want me to call for squad? I wasn't trying to let that shit happen to me. You know what I'm saying? It was real. They was instilling fear in you psychologically. Right before they actually beat your ass, they was really beating your ass. So for all you tough guys out there who really believe that your ass can't get beat, go to Red Onion State Prison and watch what happened to you. You'll be the toughest guy who turned corn puff. You hear me? This is what it is. Now, don't get it twisted. And for those who don't know what getting it twisted means, um, I'm saying don't get it misconstrued. There were some guys who were radical inside the prison uh, population who were attacked the police. They wasn't afraid. But I must say... Um, the opening act when you first walk in and you first see this shit, it was unbelievable. It looked something like a Spartacus, like Spartan 300, like all these big ass white boys. And we was the uh, enemy. <laughs> we was the uh, cotton picker. We was the slave. And it looked all like that, just like that. That same picture I just gave you looked just like that. <laughs> you know, and um, so now they take me down this long ass hallway. I'm walking down this long ass hallway. It feel like I'm on death row. This long, like it's like they just walking me to my death. And they like, yeah. They ask me like they, they ask me questions like where I'm from and stuff like this. Three big ass white boys just walking me down to my cell, you know, to get my socks, my shoes, or whatever the case may be. Because I'm gonna be in Red Onion for a long time, you know. Uh, so, you know, like I said, Red Onion is a long term prison. You know, they'll starve your ass. They were starving dudes, like putting fake trays in. would be guys who ain't eat for days, weeks, months, fighting the police, man, because this was a very hostile environment. And opposed to just being prisoner against prisoner, it was prisoner against prisoner and racist uh, correctional officers who would beat your ass. I witnessed one time being in Red Onion State Prison with so many different stories that I have from this place because I did a total of seven years and two stunts there or two stunts uh, for those who don't know what that mean. Um, that mean I've been there two times. The first time I did two years there, the second time I did five years in segregation, solitary confinement. And it was there that um, I found myself either withering away or I was going to hold on to the rope of faith. So you know, being in an environment like that, I had to, sh I had to show and prove. I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to bring the pain hardcore from the brain. Then what I'm saying on some method man shit. You know, I had my knife, I had my shank, because I always was the type of person who's going to attack you first. If I feel like you're going to do something to me, I'm going to get you first. So one particular time, I'm happy to be around and I'm on the yard and uh, things like that, getting the altercation with with these guys and stuff like that. And um, I happened to stab one of them. I stabbed him pretty, pretty good in his face three times um a lot of people who was there know about this story because it was a pretty big thing and um what i realized about that place it, it, it would make you become uh animalistic it would make you become barbaric it would make you become a hunter instead of the hunted or if you're already that type of individual it would accelerate that hunger and desire to want to stay alive and i had to do anything in my possibility or anything that I could think of to stay alive, even if it meant taking somebody else's life. And the point of this whole thing about Red Ann and why I'm telling this story is because this is the very place I see so many people lose their mind, lose their soul, lose their whole everything, can't can never could come back from it. They can never come back from it. And I watched it and I always prayed and said, talk to God, even at my most lowest points, even 
at my most lowest points, I spoke to God and I always told God, uh, you know, give me the strength to be able to make it through this. Whether I got to kill, uh, just don't let me die in the process. And what I mean by kill, there's uh, people in there with life sentences, people in there for cutting people heads off, uh, murdering, stabbing to death. Um, so you never know who you're dealing with in an environment like that. Just because somebody looks pretty good, cool, uh, refreshing, doesn't mean they won't be at your neck um, willing to take your life. Uh, you know, they have nothing to lose. And this is the place that I really was at my lowest because I was locked down for years and years and years in these holes, uh, speaking to the walls, locked and isolated in a cell by myself uh, for years and years. I mean, like, I actually did five years my second time in solitary confinement. And I even asked myself, like, what is this shit all about? What what are we doing this for? Like, what are we thugging for? Like, what what is the end result of this shit? What what is the end result? Life in Red Onion State Prison? Life at Wallen Bridge State Prison? Life where you don't even get a chance to live your life? Like, it has to be something that changed you and make you look at things differently. And for me, seeing all the bloodshed, um, having to deal with the cops, having to fight correctional officers having to, you know, just go through the shit I had to go through, man. You know, it makes you even stronger or it, or it makes you weak. And for me, um, I'm not where I want to be in my life right now, but I do want to say I'm free. You know, being free do give you an option if you do choose to do better with your life, opposed to being in a jail cell like Red Onion when you can't do nothing. So the moral of the story right here is this. You don't want to be nowhere like Red Onion. Life behind bars, life in places like Red Iron, that shit don't give you nothing. And when you get out, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got shit. So all the thugging, all the work you put in, all the money you blew, all the shit you did, all the shorties you sex, all that shit. When you get out, you ain't got none of that shit. And you got to start over. So if you 10, 15, 20 years removed from the streets, that means you way behind. So... I'd rather tell you to focus on being in environments like your home, working a job, doing your thing like that, opposed to, you know, being in places like Red Onion State Prison where they make you squat and cough and show your butt cheeks. And that's what they do. And that's the reality of it. And a lot of guys probably wouldn't tell you that. They make you lift up your scrotum sack, open your butt cheeks, squat and cough. And they tell you to do that shit again and again and again. You know? And this is what we up against every day. Like right now, you know, probably going through some shit. But it ain't worse than Red Onion. Just keep this in mind. Dedicate to elevate your life. Everybody love a prison story, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, you know, with that being said, I'm going to give you more and more of those. But the moral will always be the moral. The story is going to always be raw and uncut, but it's going to be a message hidden inside the box.